Andy. I hope you're doing great. I hope you're also doing some good. We're here with John Shepard. John is a fitness entrepreneur. John is going to walk us through everything it takes to become a fitness entrepreneur, uh, all the ups and downs, the ins and outs, and the challenging, and we're starting right now. I like to describe myself as a fitness entrepreneur, which is really two things. It's a, a fitness professional, which there's a lot of different niches in that category, and then also as an entrepreneur, somebody who creates their own opportunities and makes a business out of themselves. Originally, my whole life I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to own my own business. That was uh, my number one priority when I was really growing. As far as being a trainer, I wouldn't say I picked being a trainer, I would say being a trainer picked me. I loved working out, I loved training myself, I loved the discipline, the mental part of it, the, the way you can see your body change was very important to me, and it became a valuable commodity. I got into training my friends at first. They would always ask me, can you show me what to do at the gym when they saw the gains I was making or the things I did with strength or you know, backflips or really heavy deadlifts or running marathons, things like that, people started to notice. And they wanted me to train them and teach them how to get there. I loved it, I would do it for free. I'd just go work out with my friends, teach them what I knew and what I had learned on my own. Uh, and I took a lot of classes just because I was interested. Not so much for a college degree, but more just the information because I was passionate about it. I wanted to learn as much as I could before I actually got into the industry. Now, I knew I wanted to become a trainer because I was so passionate about it and liked it, and I realized I could make a living out of this. People really want this, and, uh, and it's a, a market that people might pay for, of course. Doing something you love is always better. <laughs> Finding a passion is something you're doing. After I got my certified personal training degree, I decided I wanted to start at the lowest level and work my way up. I wanted to not only gain experience through training people, but I also wanted to learn the industry. I wanted to see how it worked, how you schedule people, how people pay for it, what they want, who, who, who buys this product mostly. I needed to learn about the industry so I can end up doing it for my main business. It would be First, changing people's lives. I've been in different industries, I'm not gonna to go too far into that, but I changed my entire career to do this because I loved it so much. And I love helping people, and fitness changed my life so much for the better, as far as discipline, mental strength, body, confidence, I could go on and on and on. And when I became a trainer, I started helping people realize that, how much it changed my life, and it changes people's lives for the better all the way around. Really helping people is my favorite part about the job as a trainer. As an entrepreneur, which is the second part of this, a fitness entrepreneur, being your own boss is number one, the best part of my job. Nobody can tell me what to do. <laughs> I have multiple bosses in one way, but I can lose one, get another one. Um, being your own boss, you can work as hard as you want, make more money, you can work less if you want and not worry about money. It's completely up to you and uh, nobody's holding you back, nobody's standing in your way, uh, but you can't be afraid of hard work, that's for sure. Owning your own business, you wear all the hats, you do everything. Now I've heard people say owning a business is hard, but I have a feeling that some people out there think that owning your own business is kind of a cakewalk. People are doing things for you. And that couldn't be further from the truth. The way I started my business is I want to do everything myself. I love to have control. I love to have it to where if I do something wrong, it's my fault. If I do something good, it's because of me. It's that competitive aspect. When I started this business, I didn't do this for money at all. I did this as a challenge. It was something I was terrified of um, and I wanted to see if I could do it. Uh, I wanted the challenge, the sink or swim. So I jumped right into it. Now, people think that you're just making tons of money uh, and there's potential for a lot of money because you're diversifying your portfolio. You have a lot of streams of income coming in instead of just trading your time for money. But you're working way harder. <laughs> uh, some people would rather work maybe eight hours a day and collect a paycheck. You are never not working as a business owner. You're working 24 seven, seven days a week. And it, uh, it is the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my entire life, but it is by far the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> a 
personality traits that would be great for this industry are you can't be afraid of hard work. I recommend everybody who gets into an industry like this put in a lot of work through hard jobs and understand. You're gonna have to wake up early, you're gonna have to go to bed late, you're gonna have to work on days off. The most rewarding thing you could ever do, I'm telling you, when you're done, but you have to be a hard worker. You definitely have to be somewhat competitive. A lot of people are in this industry and wanna do this, and you have to somehow rise above that. Um, the biggest portion I would say about it is you have to have mental strength. In the fitness industry, we talk a lot about physical stuff, but if you are not mentally strong and can work through failures, um, then you're gonna fizzle out of this really quick. <laughs> Absolutely need to be persistent and always wanting to learn where that passion comes out too. You wanna know the, the latest training methods and you're always advancing your education in different ways, whether that's reading books or formal education. You have to desire more. The type of person that would not do well in the fitness industry is uh, somebody definitely afraid of hard work, would not <laughs> do well or last too long in this. In the fitness entrepreneur industry, you're up early, 5, 6 a.m., you're working a split, you take the middle of the day off, you come back at night and work late, you're doing business in between, you're never really off work. Uh, you have to definitely love this job and uh, somebody who just wants to clock in and clock out and go home and play video games, I would, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend a different field. Uh, <laughs> if you're not really into fitness and love working out and love the grind and the hustle and the challenge of training your body and teaching people that, you probably won't do too well in this industry because you have to be a role model for the people who are looking into your business. You have to live the fitness lifestyle and really like it to uh, be successful in this, for sure. As far as education, uh, there's multiple levels like any other job. You can get into the industry and start training people with a certified personal training certificate where you would study on your own until you could, felt comfortable taking a test and you take a nationally accredited test. You go to an actual place, take the test, you become certified. There's also better ways where you can have more opportunities, of course, in getting a fitness degree, something in a sports science field or a kinesiology field. You can also advance that even to a master's degree in something like kinesiology. These are huge advantages if you want to be hired by somebody else. It is good to have this also to be taken seriously by clientele and things like that. On the entrepreneur side of that, it's very different. You can have a lot of schooling in there that will help you. My recommendation is getting into the industry and seeing how it works. Finding a niche field that you like, whether you like training athletes, you might wanna go help work for a school or intern, but the most important part of being an entrepreneur is getting into the field and learning the day-to-day -day aspects of it when it comes down to marketing and working with people and how, how credit card processing things work and how sales work and, and the nitty-gritty on the inside of how to find a space and, 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 <laughs> and just continue through. There's so many aspects of it, but you have to actually get in an industry and I recommend finding a competent mentor and, the, and any entrepreneur and everyone I've ever met is more than glad to help you and give you experience and what it took for them to get to that level of their business. When it comes to salaries, there's a wide range that you can receive as an employee. If you are a personal trainer at say a big box gym, you can range anywhere from $50,000 a year to $80,000 a year. But I would say the real money comes from the private sector when you start to become an independent trainer. You make relationships with your clients and you can get clients that last with you for years and they pay high in prices. You may end up paying rent somewhere where you're training, but you have control of your payment. You can work, train more clients and make more money. You can train less and make less money you decide what you charge them as well. And as you become a more competent trainer, you can train and, and charge more money as well as it goes from there. Top independent trainers can make 100 grand a year easy, if not more, depending on how much experience you have and how you market yourself, which is another hard part of it. As far as a 
fitness entrepreneur owning your own business and creating multiple streams of income and having other trainers work for you, uh, you can double, triple, or really sky's the limit as far as that goes. <laughs>